All right, so our next speaker is methods and is uh, Dan Schild, methods and approach for geotechnical evaluation using CubeSat configurations. This will be a remote talk. Okay, so this will be a remote talk. Okay. All right, this is Dan Schild from N Science Corp. Our talk basically today is on geotechnical evaluation methods using uh, CubeSats. Um, a good portion of the beginning of this presentation is really historical. Uh, you'll note that a lot of it does, does not appear in a CubeSat form necessarily, but uh, part of this program that we call Hummingbird's Charm, we were looking at function first versus form. Um, and as you'll see in the presentation over time, there's been uh, in favor of uh, going into the CubeSat form. Uh, I'm going to review some early charts that are basically intro to our form necessarily, but uh, part of this program that we call Hummingbird's Charm, we were looking at function first versus form. Um, and as you'll see in the presentation over time, there's been uh, inputs to this uh, concept that have really worked in favor of uh, going into CubeSat form. Uh, I'm going to review some early charts that are basically intro to the whole situation regarding Neo-NIA applications of uh, Hummingbird's Charm. Um, and I'm just going to briefly bring these up and um, discuss them very shortly, uh, in a very short manner. Um, a lot of this had to do with our entry into the Neo-NIA activity had to do with uh, the beginnings of uh, Obama's uh, speech regarding uh, asteroid missions and manned asteroid missions. Um, obviously, this pictorial here shows what was considered uh, or going to be the Plymouth Rock mission. Um, we're no longer in that. Uh, in that vein now, as you know, but, uh, with the ARM mission coming on. But essentially, we were questioning ourselves as to dates when certain things like this would happen and what would need to happen ahead of these activities in order to guarantee their success or, or mitigate the risk to success. Um, similarly here, uh, another activity obviously is, is asteroid ISRU. Another area, of course, is defense capability. And lastly, you know, the big question mark, of course, is, you know, how do we, when does this happen? If it does happen, what can we do about it? Um, so Hummingbird's Charm Start was really, again, going back to the, uh, the manned mission concept that, that uh, Obama had brought up back in 2010, I believe, back at, down at KFC. And the real question mark at that time, of course, was, how do we get enough information about these targets to allow for a manned mission to occur? And I won't read through all these, but this is some of the rationale and the thinking that went behind what we were going to do. Uh, given all that, we uh, and, and given what we learned at various meetings, small bodies of small assessment group, target NEO, uh, planetary defense conference, we, we arrived at this guidance for our own activity, being observed touch early often seemed to be the key to what needs to happen in the next few years. Uh, this is a historical chart going back to the original Hummingbird singular. This was a very complex mission. Um, I think it was a New Frontiers class at the time. Um, clearly you can see in this picture that the science deck was very involved. It had uh, some complicated mechanisms for deployment of the science deck and for gathering samples for in situ um, analysis. At the, at the target. Uh, again, this is just some rationales. Um, this, is, this is rationales that existed back for the original Hummingbird, and we still see them as being valid today. Um, again, I won't read all these, but I'll, I'll leave these up. Uh, certainly, they'll be available in the presentation. Um, but we did see a logical fit to a lot of the activities being thought about several years back at NASA including the, uh, the NASA X Scout missions, for instance. Uh, there was also the beginnings of uh, what was going to be the next, the, uh, uh, what was the, geez, I'm 
fumbling here. The asteroid next mission and the next gen near mission. Uh, of course, all this has changed with the uh, with the entry of the ARM mission. Again, this is more of the rationale behind what we were doing. Mentioned Plymouth Rock there. Obviously, Plymouth Rock's gone. Um, we're now talking ARM, but um, but we've got ideas for utilization of hummingbirds charm beyond ARM. Um, certainly, that's our intention. Um, again, more of the objectives. Uh, this all goes back to the original, but they still apply today. Uh, in going to a number of targets that uh, we need to analyze and characterize. Uh, more of the drivers behind what we were doing, obviously, um, even before we arrived at the CubeSat idea, we were looking at being overwhelmingly cost-effective. We had uh, multiple vehicles going to select the targets. And that last bullet there, including some uh, ideas about simple tag, uh, touch-and-go sampling, uh, multiple birds for redundancy, you know, those sort of things. This was the original uh, hummingbird charm plural uh, concept. Obviously, it's not a cube set. Uh, we had more of a uh, this was more of a one meter on a side kind of vehicle. Um, we were also thinking about the fact that we had to be able to provide power and communications to these hummingbird vehicles and multiples of these vehicles going to a specific, uh, specific target. This was a concept for a stacked configuration for launch. Um, this this one goes into uh, again historically. This is what we wanted to be able to provide with the original hummingbirds charm concept. Um, we had various suites we were looking at versus uh, for asteroid and comet. This was a typical engagement of a in the previous version. Uh, again, this is evolution um, history. Uh, going back to the original concept of a couple of multiple birds going to a specific target where again, that OBSCOM vehicle had to be able to keep the capability to communicate with the touch and go vehicle and also had to be able to communicate with Earth with our data. We were carrying along a lot with us, that was the point there. Again, this is another engagement concept. And this is another engagement concept looking at the transmission radar systems with having multiple vehicles. The idea that we could possibly be able to get good internal structure information using uh, penetrating radars uh, on both sides of the of the target, um, something we are still uh, still considering as applicable to even the, the CubeSat version of this mission. Um, modes of operation, something that still was under study, uh, even today. Uh, you know, there's there's two uh, variations on that theme. One would be that we could be on station, um, meaning that we would already have some uh, pre-position the vehicles, uh, maybe in a GPO type orbit, or uh, nearby passers that would come between the Earth and the Moon uh, distance. Um, there's the other idea is: are, are we catching or are we pitching? Meaning, are we are we really having to go deep to a target, or can we sit and wait for one to come by? Uh, on average, we get 12 nearby passers every year in between the Earth and the Moon. This is more on the modes of operation and continued studies that we're doing. I won't go into this in detail, but only to say that, um, that everything has to be done with the idea that we have to be overwhelmingly cost-effective in these, in these devices. This is where things started to change with the arrival of ARM. Um, regardless of what you think of the ARM mission, it's, uh, it has spawned a lot of ideas to come forth. Uh, with regard to our version of the Hummingbird's Charm, uh, we started talking about something that could fit within the 6U uh, CubeSat form. And what would drive that and allow that to happen or enable that to happen would be the fact that we could ride along with the ARM uh, capture vehicle. We didn't have to worry about calm. We didn't have to worry about power necessarily, since each one of these vehicles would be capable of uh, 10, hour, 10 hours of operation on uh, on site, on just battery alone, and that each vehicle would be, each of these three vehicles would be capable of up to 10 penetrations of the surface um, for that mission and providing some early characterization. Now, if if ARM goes to the plan A target, which is essentially just a free roaming body, single body boulder, uh, characterization may not be as important, but if we go to an Itacawa-like target, like 
development for trade here, then we, we probably have the opportunity to do some kind of characterization work. And I, I, I glossed over it a little bit, but I guess I should explain one of the main features for Hummingbird's Charm is the fact that we can go with a probe, go characterize the, the surface uh, properties. And that being ferocity, compaction, um, these are very important features for manned missions, ISRU, planetary defense. These are, these are factors that need to be known ahead of time. Uh, these are various versions of the uh, current vehicle that we're looking at for the CubeSat uh, concept. Now we get into the, the, the basics of what we're still working with regard to making the hummingbird charm in the 6U form work. And um, these are, uh, this is a list of things that we're continuing to work and evolve. You know, is it a fixed probe versus a simple deployable probe, uh, extendable probes, such, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, right now we're still basing baseline a fixed probe. I won't read this because it's rather lengthy, but this again is something that we're, we're very much working at this point in trying to develop concepts for the surface uh, contact that would allow us to get this kind of information mentioned in these 12 bullets. Uh, and part of what this work, uh, if we, uh, we've submitted a piece to our proposal to Nats Roses with JFP involved, uh, we're hoping that uh, we can address much of this using the system down at JSC. Um, they've got a large air bearing system that will allow us to mimic both the asteroid side of the, of the problem and the, uh, the hummingbird side of the problem. Again, more of the evolutionary work going on. Uh, attitude uh, relative to target is important. Uh, probe uh, penetration reaction force is obviously something that we need to understand in order to back out what the, the information about the physical characteristics of the surface. Um, I'll, I'll let you read the rest of that. Um, more on the, the probe concept. What else can we do with the probe other than, with, when, other than just mechanical? Uh, can we do thermal profiling? Can we do uh, thermal conductivity, uh, electrical properties? Um, we've also been working with some folks on the idea of doing spectroscopy down the, down the probe, down the length of the probe, using fiber optics and such, where we would have the actual devices back in the main body of the Hummingbird vehicle. Uh, extraction options. This is another area that we're working. Um, we want to be able to probe in multiple locations. Uh, how do we best withdraw from the surface for the next and get ready for the next penetration? Um, there's maneuvering thrusters, um, high thrust propulsion. Uh, there's been ideas about mechanical uh, pushers to push off the surface. Uh, and the a bottom line would be uh, we just simply leave the penetrator behind. Uh, our conclusion right now is that we use maneuvering thrusters. Uh, the spacecraft baselines um, this is rather important. We, we deliver uh, HSC to the target vicinity coupled to a carrier vehicle. Uh, if it was ARM or we're working some other boot concepts with Moe Aerospace and some other folks, as you'll see in the, the chart coming up. Um, HSC separates takes nominal position above the target. We're looking to do 10 or more surface contracts, uh, contacts uh, with each vehicle, uh, provide large global characterization capability, and our approach to target is at 2 meters per second, and there's a reason for that, in that low velocity contact with the surface has been expressed as an important characterization capability that uh, over and above what you might expect in getting just simple uh, impactors, for, for example. Uh, mass estimates, I won't go into this, but we're looking at a total wet mass right now, 6.5 kilograms for each uh, hummingbird vehicle. Uh, is there information about both the V and such? Uh, this was just a pictorial of a hummingbird along with the armed vehicle. And your, in this case, this would be if we were going to a plan A target, which is more like a boulder-like as opposed to a large target like Itacala. Uh, this, this chart really goes back to the original intent of uh, Hummingbird's Charm, that whether we're part of ARM or not, that ARM is not the end game. The real end game here is to be able to characterize a large number of targets in some reasonable time frame, making that, making that information available to 
a number of missions, whether they be manned, planetary defense, ISRU, et cetera, et cetera. Part of the idea here is to put together an operation characterization team, or teams, and that these communities on the left-hand side, they need to be involved. And we've talked to quite a few people in, in all these areas. And um, I think we've got some uh, good response in the idea that, that this needs to be done, and we need to have these experts available to us from the very beginning of the program. I mentioned the, the idea of uh, go deep missions. If we're not attached to ARM and we have to go ourselves to a, a deep target, we obviously have to uh, ha we have to have some way of getting there. We have to have a way to communicate. We have to have a way to bring the, uh, some power and communication capability with us. So we're we're talking to uh, several folks, including Exoterra on the side over here with their Soul Rider idea. Um, Mo Aerospace has been presenting this idea of Smart Espa. I think you're going to see more of that uh, in this conference. Um, there are ways for us to get out there, and uh, we're working with the right people, we believe. Uh, the status of the current activities, we do have an, a NASA SDR at the very moment that we're working. And uh, as part of the activity, we are working some probe concepts in our lab here in Wheat Ridge, Colorado. Uh, we have a SpaceX agreement now with JSC and NASA. And we're really kind of wrapping our arms around the schedule and, and some milestones there and being able to work with NASA and coming up with some good ideas uh, for exploration targets and such and uh, deep space mission concepts. There is also uh, joint activities with JSC. We are uh, involved with a P-STAR Step 2 proposal, which we just submitted last week. And we're putting in a Picasso proposal here early November. We are part of the ARM DAA trade studies. We're, uh, we're involved with uh, Exoterra as a subcontract, providing some input to our historic characterization suites that might be available. We're here with School of Minds on several uh, programs, uh, early stage uh, initiative, uh, innovation programs, excuse me. Uh, they're collaborators on several things that we're doing with uh, School of Minds. Similarly, with uh, New Mexico State University, uh, another early stage innovation proposal has been submitted. Uh, we are part of the surveys. We are um, involved with uh, the IRANI survey at the uh, School of Mines at last. We're an industry partner along with Ball Aerospace and Honeybee and several other folks. And then we're continuing to work with Moog Aerospace on some of these deep space missions, mother bird concepts, uh, habitat concepts for our HSC vehicles. Um, final thought, uh, this was not my quote, but uh, it seem, uh, seems to fit, particularly when we're trying to understand um, the lay of the land with regard to NEOs and NEOs and impact potentials and such things. That uh, if we don't get this right, the rest is just a compensation. And uh, that's that's all I have. If there's any questions, be happy to field them now. All right.